my job jobs on my resume or, or, or on my security questionnaire. And that's what I was told by a Westinghouse security person who's in charge of all the security paperwork for all the nuclear contractors. He said, no, you don't have to put it down. If you never step foot on the plant and you never wore the badge or anything, you don't have to put down that job's description because the guy was going to give me a bad reference if I did. So I, I figured, oh, good, I escaped the bullet. You know, I escaped that one. Okay, so I get to work. Well, that was, that, that was where they set me up because that, that's what this one technician told me who was escorting me on site. He, he said, they set you up. They deliberately told you that so that you wouldn't put it down so they could use that as an excuse to escort you off site because you knew too much about the other thing. Okay, well, um, uh, Richard Knight is here. Do you have a question or feedback for Susan? Thanks for joining us. Sure. Thanks. Hi, Susan. Uh, wow. Uh, Hi, Richard. Absolutely, absolutely fascinating, incredible on so many different levels, yet at the same time viable, accurate in regards to the various species and contacts of races that you've had. Um, only as far as goes the grays, the blues, and the greens, since I had contact with them when I was five. But um, it is just fascinating that, you know, you, you went into the situation as under the guise, basically, of, of, of a federal contractor under nuclear stations, and then you got involved with Westinghouse and all these other folks. And then in turn, to have direct contact and be given so much information that, was evidently and is evidently to I'm sure a large extent extremely classified because there's exactly lots of people that don't want us to know what you're actually coming out with and yet exactly. at the same time you're you're not really bound by any privacy act or secrecy act because you never signed any direct privilege with any of the agencies that you mentioned previously so it's absolutely Talk about you're absolutely delightful yeah, you're absolutely delightful, but at the same time, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, why now? I mean, what has inspired you after all this time of going through all these various experiences and being exposed to all of these other persons who had like experiences as yourself? Why now? I mean, is there something um, – I mean, is, is some of your contacts, you know, from the other races in, in other dimensions and so forth inspiring you to – make this contact now and, and, and come out with all this or, or exactly what? Yeah, it, it all happened unplanned spontaneously. I didn't have any intention on doing this. Is it something that all of a sudden it started presenting itself to me? And I thought, am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be going public? What am I supposed to be doing? Do they want me to do this? I know that they told me in the past, Oh, there was another scene I forgot to tell you in 1982, 1983, during the Orange Bowl in Miami, they saw a big UFO, and I had an experience, a very telepathic experience with my twin soul soulmate who was flying the, that UFO, cylinder shape. And they were so, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. And this is my own people. And yet, and I felt like, am I violent? Because they never did tell me, okay, now you can tell them. So I thought, well, no, they don't want me to tell them. Why am I doing this? Why all of a sudden all this radio work? And they... And I telepathically asked him, they said, well, it's okay. That isn't going to have any relevance one way or another on our security or on our work or anything up there. You can do that or something. I guess now because it's deep presenting itself, it was never really anything I anticipated. It just happened. So I guess you would actually say that this is your higher self um, controlling your physical self to share all of this relevance of memory and all of these relevant experiences, because I'm, I, I believe wholeheartedly that by putting it out there now, you're calling forth a lot of individuals who have had like experiences and didn't know or had no one to turn to. So you're validating to a lot, who knows how many thousands, maybe even millions of people, you know, that have been abducted at various points and times in their lives. And also, of course, affected telepathically or affected intuitively, affected physically, and in all kinds of different ways. And yet at the same time, you're, you're kind of verifying that a lot are very positive 
while at the same time acknowledging that there are those that obviously play with us like we're toys or something for their own amusement. It's just, it's just fascinating. I mean, wow. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just fantastic. Well, I love, I love, lo- lo- love the part that, yeah, a lot of information I have, according to the government, would be considered classified. But I never worked for the government. <laughs> exactly, you're not bound by any secrecy act or any or any documents or pledge that you would have signed in that regard. So therefore, they can't really control you from any aspect. And because uh, I mean, you're you're covered under the Constitution. You know, this is your. First Amendment right, freedom of speech, and they they have no right to control you because you never consented to any kind of agreement or control thereof. Yeah, and and, and that just ma- it makes me really proud. Talk about a thorn, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Susan, I, this is your platform. Where would you like to go from here? Because. You're sharing documentary type of information, and I hope uh, you know that the world is listening, and we don't know where all this is going, but we do know radio waves travel universally. So would you like to call down any other universal level of, you said, E.T. Alien Incarnate Hybrid, and Susan Johnson is that. So I've got Susan Johnson of Earth As Is, and we're here to support you. Janet Lesson, Richard Knight, and Teresa Morris. So, with the three of us here, where would you like to take this ET alien incarnate hybrid platform? Any other people you want to talk about or invite in the future? How do you see this platform? Yeah, take it away. Um, Next segment. And then after about 10 minutes, uh, once again, pause so we can give you feedback. Okay, go ahead, Susan. Specifically, I want people that are like me to find each other, to be able to share their experiences with each other and give each other moral support. It's been a lifelong quest of mine to find other people like me on this planet, and I've come to the conclusion there's not, nobody else on this planet for my group. It's just me. After all the searching, calling up all the UFO investigators, researchers, everybody like that, even psychics, I've come to the conclusion that I think I'm the only one here for my race, for my group. Well, it, just because you haven't got you know, received the answer yet doesn't mean they're not out there. It's you know, there's, it's a big planet, you know, and not everybody listens to all these things. So we're getting it out there, and you very well might get some responses. I guess I should put it out there that if you want to talk to Susan, you can give you know, whatever email or whatever you want to do, but you can contact me at Aquarian Radio. I'm Jenna Care Lesson. Aquarian Radio at gmail dot com and I'll forward it on to Susan. But Susan, do you have any way that you want to be contacted? Um and realize there might once you open up your email or your phone you, you might get uh so be careful what you give out because you might get a lot yeah, of calls. Exactly. Okay. I'd rather go yeah, through Richard, the I got a little feedback. Yeah. Wait, let her finish. What, did, what did you say, Susan? Susan, what did you I'd say? I didn't quite through, hear the end. I'd rather go through the Aquarian Radio Network channel to filter out because I know that there's a lot of people out there that do this to try to get attention and notoriety, which is not my intention. Okay, and you might that's get a, a good lot idea. of moles. You might get a lot of moles, too, that are planted to go in and try to weed information out of me. I've had that happen before, and then and then I've had government, like Alberto Rosales, who writes the books on Missing. He wanted some of my artwork. He wanted me to do some artwork for him, and I was willing. I was trying to become an artist and trying to become commissioned as an artist to get my work out there so I can do artwork for a living. And I even did drawings for the South Florida Fern Society and stuff like that. And and the one person who, who was in England, um, she recognized me as very accurate as an artist because I depicted a – it was a maidenhair type fern. And she was very impressed and said that I was very – I had did a very accurate depiction of that fern and the detail and everything. And um, I was trying to – 
get work as an artist on the side because I figured if I can't work in the nuclear industry anymore, I was going to try to work on the side and get extra money that way. And then this Alberto Rosales said that he wanted people to do artwork, and and I answered, and I started talking to him a little bit because he asked me about my background, and then all of a sudden – he just blew me off. He te- he emailed me and said, "Don't ever call me. Don't ever contact me. Email me, text me, or any way, shape, or form. I don't want to hear from you anymore. The government is involved." Okay, well, let's let's focus on um, positive aspect of this work. So we know there's going to be some I don't know what's called kooks and crazies out there, but I will do what I can to to screen them. I always do that anyway. That's what I do. <laughs> I get contacts all the time. So once again, it's aquarianradio at gmail.com. But um, realize I will be screening you. So please, uh, no trolls. We don't want any trolls. Okay, so back to um, Richard. Would you like to ask <clears throat> Susan a question for this next, next segment where she's going to uh, go into the information? that we need to know. And we're at the top of the first hour. We're going to go two hours max, and then we're going to call it a day. We'll come back another time. So go ahead, Richard. Ask um, Susan a question. Susan is the focus of today's show. Take it away, Richard. Oh, and somebody's got a lot of background noise, so please mute if you're not speaking. Thank you. That's Richard. Richard, are you sitting yeah. in front of a computer or TV? He may not Hang on a second. Hang on a second. No, uh, there's two other things there we I go. want to mention about the. There's two other things I want to mention about the Urquequians. For some reason, the strong impression I'm getting from the way people react to me when I start talking to them about them, is that for some reason I think they were working with the government at one time and they broke away. They they, they disbanded the contract. Because of the fact that they they were not doing, they were not they were not um, uh, honoring the contract. That's the right word, honoring. And so therefore they 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 broke it off and they're freelance now. They do whatever they want to do. They don't answer to anybody. They are benevolent. They're working with 60 million humans, is what I found out. They're they're from an area behind the star Antares, and they're also from. Um, a constellation called Hydra, which I found out. This is really weird how I found out. And apparently, for some reason, they're a sore spot with the government or something because every time I start talking about them, um, the calls drop, something happens. It, it's weird. And it's like everybody's definitely afraid of them, and I don't understand why. Because when I am around them, I get a, I have a special. A, Affection toward them <laughs> Wow That's interesting um, And they're, maybe they're, they're not my real people But maybe they're someone That you you and your people do Some kind of trade with Or maybe your neighbors Or, or some no, no, kind no. of galactic we, we, arrangement No We work with them they're, they're oh, okay. our alliances. They're, they're, they're warriors, but, but they're also master energy creator beings, and they create different planetary systems. Wow. And they do work with us. Okay. Hey, and, and the, <clears throat> Susan, can I get you to call in now? The last time you tried to call in, you couldn't get in. But uh, 347 945 7207, write that down because you, you're on my merge <laughs> phone call. And um, I just had some people come in, and I can't mute myself because you're on my phone <laughs> recording. So could you call yeah, into yeah, the studio? Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want. Uh, what is the number? You said oh seven. I thought it was seven two nine seven. No three four seven nine four five seven two zero seven. That's for everybody listening, if you'd like to call in. But Susan Johnson is our special guest today, bringing us ET Alien Incarnate Hybrid, 347-945-7207. But if you could do that, Susan, then I can uh, do a lot more with my board. But I apologize. Plus, uh, when I turn on Richard, he's uh, uh, we were picking up some sound off of him, too. 
So could you call in, and I'll let Janet and Richard talk for a minute. Um, 